Absent Laria. Here. Member James Sermoni. Here. And I'm Andrew B. DeSantis, Chair. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of July 5th, 2017. Do we'll I make have a motion? motion? Me. Let's see. Motion to approve by Second. Nick Lason. Second by Joseph Lavalley. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing notice of intent, DEP file number 0610703571 Revere Street, construction of a 51 unit apartment building with two levels of parking and four levels of residential space on 0.68 of an acre of land at Revere Street, Revere Beach Boulevard by the neighborhood developers, INC. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion open. I'll second by it. Vince Laria, seconded by Nick Malayson. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Joe, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, push the button. There you go. Take two. Um, Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. For the record, Joe Pesnola from Han Hancock Associates, uh, rep representing the neighborhood developers um, for a notice of intent for development of a 51-unit rental apartment um, located at 571 Revere Street on the corner of Revere Street and um, Satcher. Uh, I do have the, the white slips. OK, could I have those, please? <coughs> Yep. The project is a, a redevelopment of 29,000 square foot, foot lot, um, formerly ha had the, the Cove restaurant and a par an apartment building, uh, and a, currently the foundation and remnants of the foundation are on that on site. Uh, additionally, there was a large parking area. The area is um, abuts the Eastern County Ditch. Uh, so that is uh, one of the, the resource areas. The bank uh, of the ditch is, uh, is the limit of the, the resource area. Um, and the second resource area under the Wetlands Protection Act is uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, so we have um, those two uh, resource areas. The land subject to coastal storm flowage is elevation 11. The site's generally at somewhere between uh, the, the main body of the site is between elevation four and four and six. Can um, I interrupt for a minute? Certainly. You don't mind. Um, so those are the only resource areas? Yes. Okay. Um, there's no BVW? Uh, I'm, my name is Daniel Pageant. Um, I'm an environmental scientist with VHB, Venice Hang and Russellland. Uh, we did the uh, wetland delineation for the site. There is no bordering vegetative wetland at the site. It is, a, it is nearly a vertical bank to the side, at the edge of the um, Eastern County Ditch, and it transitions very quickly to the paved and, and really filled site that's there today. It's dim, uh, uh, dominated by Phragmites along the edge of the bank, and of course, Phragmites will grow in wetlands, but will also grow in your parking lot. Um, there's Sorry, but this, is, <clears throat> this isn't a parking lot. So were there, was hydric soil tested? Uh, we, did, we did examine the soils. Um, it's fill. Uh, there's some evidence of, uh, of hydric soils, you know, really in, in, the, um, in the ditch itself. There's nothing, there's nothing landward of the, of the break and slope. Is, uh, is that not. documented in the notice of intent, um, the hydric soil testing? I don't believe we provided that in the notice of intent, no. Could I get your last name again and your firm? Uh, Daniel, the last name is P-A-D-I-E-N. I work for VHB. We're in Watertown in Boston. Any 
You said yep. Daniel. Yes, sir. Bain. B A E I N E. P A D I E N. B A D I E N. Okay. Thank you. V H B. One of the things I was wondering about was uh, defining it as coastal bank. Now, when I think of coastal bank, I think of an elevated portion. You know, and it's the same grade across the top of the ditch as it is on the side that Waterfront, uh, Waterfront Square is built. So I'm not sure why that would be considered coastal bank. Um. I, I believe, well, I'll give you the definition of coastal bank. Uh, coastal uh, bank means the seaward face of any side of any elevated landform other than coastal doom, which lies at the landward edge of a coastal beach, land subject to tidal action or other wetland. And, uh, and I'm sorry, are you, you're the professional wetland scientist for VHB? Robert? Y yes, sir. Okay. And the other thing I thought of is salt marsh, where salt marsh is uh, 10 CMR 10.32, uh, paragraph 2. Salt marshes may contain tidal creeks, ditches, and pools. Dominant plants within salt marshes are uh, salt metal cord grass, batina patens, or salt marsh cord grass, batina altiflora. Uh, and without any evidence being provided of what the vegetation is there, I, I doubt that it's salt marsh, but without evidence being provided that it's not, can't adequately make that determination. Okay. I, I can tell you that it's, that you may request additional documentation, but I can tell you there's no Spartina alterniflora or Spartina patents present um, anywhere within, within the pro adjacent to the project site uh, south of Revere Street. Uh, we, did, we, did, we did quite a bit of, quite a bit of looking to see whether that section of the ditch was subject to tidal flooding or not, and we believe that it is not subject to tidal flooding. Um, downstream of Revere Street, uh, it is the Diamond Creek Marsh. I'm not familiar with the, all of the names out there, but that is definitely tidal down there. In fact, the city engineer maintains a tidal, a bit of a tidal gauging or a tidal collection point, a water elevation collection point, just uh, downstream of Revere Street. So there's good data for that location. That same data does not exist that we were able to find with the city engineer upstream of Revere Street. However, several observations. I went out there, my uh, certified wetland scientist went out there, was also a soil, soil scientist, excuse me. We reviewed the site. There's simply no evidence of any vegetation that is a salt tolerant vegetation other than Phragmites australis, which as It's not evident of a salt marsh. Uh, it's not evident of a salt yeah. marsh. It, it is a salt tolerant, it's a, 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 um, it's a species that can that handle some brackish water. Um, however, if it were truly um, inundated by salt water, Phragmites wouldn't grow there. So that it's, it's, it's present at the, at the upper ends of that. It needs a little bit of fresh water in order to survive. Um, so uh, I, I realize the notice of intent says it's coastal bank. Um, that was provided, that was uh, prepared by other members of the team. I, I don't believe that it's, that it's coastal bank. I believe that it's inland bank because it does not, it, uh, it, the bank does not abut and confine a coastal water body. It abuts and confines the man-made ditch that is the Eastern County ditch that flows through that section of Revere. Um, I, I don't believe that it's coastal bank. As far as tidal flow, do you think that's simply because of obstructions in the ditch? Well, first off, the, the Eastern County Ditch is a man-made structure, man-made ditch. Um, it was constructed through upland and through various pieces of salt marsh, and you all probably know the history of that perhaps more but than I do. But that's specifically referenced in the definition for 10 CMR 10.32, mosquito ditches, which is what that is. I believe that's a. I don't believe that's a mosquito ditch. I believe that's a drainage ditch that was built to drain that portion of the backside of Revere Beach when they when they started filling in 
that that area. Much as you know, much of Revere is a barrier beach, and that was there was a lot of salt, a lot of marsh back there. And they, when they started filling that in in the early, I don't mean to be teaching Revere people about the history of Revere, but my understanding is that when all that was filled, you needed somewhere for the water to go. So they built a ditch that cut. The, the, you don't the think it that. started off as a mosquito ditch when all that area was salt marsh? I, I, I don't. I think that. You know, as you see in the other. I, I, I suppose it's possible, but I. Uh, salt marsh in Revere. There's plenty of salt marshes and there's plenty of mosquito ditches. The way this one was built was, I, I, I think that it was, was more of a drainage ditch um, than, than a mosquito ditch. For I, the I, record, I, I'm going to disagree with that statement. I didn't hear what you said. For the record, I'm going to disagree with that statement. Okay. All right, continue with your presentation. Mr. Chairman, would be happy to, to get that additional data uh, in a letter form from, from BHB uh, with regard to the hydric soil uh, testing, the correction on the, the coastal bank, um, and the additional information with regards to the exact vegetation that was, that was found out there. So yeah, I, I don't really think you're wrong. I'm just questioning, you know, starting with the coastal uh, bank. When I look at your mm -hmm. barns, I don't see any peat there. Yeah. So we'll we'll complete the record, or correct the record, uh, and supplement the record from that standpoint. So the the and project also for BVW. Speak I'm, up, James. And also for BVW. And and yes, the yeah. non-presence of vegetation that would right. support that. So the, the project itself, uh, again, is uh, 51 rental units. It'll be two levels of parking, one at the, around the current ground level, the current parking level, um, uh, then a second level above that. That level will actually have direct access to Revere Street from a grade standpoint. Um, and then above that, there'll be four levels of, um, of apartments. Uh, included in that is a, an exterior courtyard um, what you're seeing here is kind of the L-shaped building, which is the, the, the four stories above, um, and the courtyard will be in the, in the northwest corner. That courtyard's actually uh, above the, uh, the parking itself. So the, the parking is, is all um, enclosed, protected from, from the weather. Um, we do have a, an area to the, to the south that is the entrance uh, off of Satcham, and um, that'll include a few parking spaces uh, and entry into the, the lower level. Uh, around uh, the, the backside against uh, the Eastern County Ditch, it, it'll be a, a passive recreation area. Uh, there'll be some uh, landscaping done, landscaping enhancements, um, some hardscapes that'll be permeable, uh, boardwalk type or, or other per permeable materials. Um, just for the residents to be able to, to enjoy that, and, and the management company will maintain that area. On, on the um, Revere Street side, between the street and the building will be, will be brought, will be filled. Right now there's a steep embankment there. That'll be filled up to the, um, to the level of the, the courtyard or, or to that second deck of, of parking. Um, and there'll be uh, more landscape enhancements uh, and, and areas for uh, the residents within that and provide a buffer, 20-foot um, buffer along Revere Street and along Satcham to, to be able to, to plant and, um, and enhance the, the look of the site. From the standpoint of stormwater, we are, um, we are decreasing the amount of impervious on-site we are um, trading roof, uh, which is considered clean for what is existing parking, but we are making um, significant strides to in, uh, improve and enhance the, the drainage system. On, on the, the north side against Revere Street, we are proposing some underground infiltration uh, to take the roof drainage um, and try to recharge it into the ground. Um, and slow any uh, contribution to uh, to peak flows to the to the ditch. 
on the south side, that exterior parking needs a uh, higher level, it needs treatment um, because it is uh, exposed. So we're proposing a, a bioretention area there and that'll get us our full treatment. It'll get us some, some uh, peak rate attenuation um, and then have uh, both an underdrain and an overflow that'll, that'll discharge to the, to the Eastern County Ditch. So we do have two uh, discharge points, this one to the north um, from the underground roof drain infiltration system and one to the south from the, um, from the bioretention area. Uh, all of the garage parking um, drainage will go through separators and go into the sanitary system as is required for any garage park, uh, for any enclosed garage parking. Um, we did look at um, volumes, although this is technically land subject to coastal storm flowage and under the performance standards of the regulations, we don't have to track and provide compensatory storage. We understand um, the historic uh, issues in this area with uh, some of the some of the lower level flooding, not not coastal flooding, but the eastern eastern county ditch spilling its banks. So we looked at the the difference between uh, the existing conditions with uh, with consideration for the building that was there, um, which I, I believe was taken down in 2013, 2014. Um, and the comparison is that with our flow through lower uh, podium level parking, where the water can go in and out, um, that we're, uh, we're net, net more uh, flood, vo flood volume than the existing situation. So we feel we won't have any detrimental impact to that, that localized flooding issue uh, in the area. And again, with our stormwater, we're improving quality, we're providing recharge, um, and we're, we're, we're controlling those, those peak rates. Um, so with that, I, I believe it's, um, that's a, a brief overview of, of the project. We have provided um, both stormwater information and geotechnical information for, for in, in support of our design, a full set of plans. Be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman, may I, may I ask some questions? Hi. Uh, my questions pertain mostly to the parking. Access and egress would be from, uh, was it Sachem Street on the side there? Both. Um, the lower level would, would access from Sachem. Um, you'd come down Sachem, turn into the parking lot, and then turn into that lower level. There's no interior ve vehicular connection between the two levels. Uh, that, that's right. one of the... And then the upper level parking would be direct access um, from Revere Street. Now you partially answer one of my questions. Evidently you said the, the, uh, the walls around the parking is going to be open. Yeah, there'll be both levels. Um, both both levels will be open at, at at in in areas in the parking area uh, um, against Eastern County Ditch. There might be I think there'll be a grate type screening, if you will, but it will allow water to pass in and out. And along the south side of the building, it'll it'll allow water to come in and out. Now on Revere Street, obviously Revere Street's up in the air, um, so there isn't that uh, openness. And on most of Sachem that starts out high and comes down, there'll be a, a solid wall. Under FEMA regulations, we're required to provide an openness ratio of one square inch of sidewall opening for every square foot of floodplain that we occupy. So we're, we're well in excess of that requirement. And that's just a requirement to say, if you've got this much area that you need to flow in and out of during a flood event, then you need to have ample open openness in your in your sidewall to get it in and out, and and we meet that. And the uh, the lower level would be basically the level of the property in the back as it stands right now. Yes. Yes. And uh, one about, last about elevation four point five. One last question. You mentioned about um, the uh, the uh, the water compensation on the bottom because it was open, but it, uh, is that cement going to be that 
How is that, Andy, that hydrostatic cement that the water goes porous. right? Porous. What is it called? Porous. Well, that's a fin. That's a simple word. Is it porous cement? And any of the Do you intend for it to be? Any of the surfaces um, around the building will be porous. So that will be, be able to recharge. The, specifically the parking area. No, the parking area will be, will, it, it has to be solid. It has to be a, either a solid concrete or a, or a um, asphalt pavement because we need to collect that. We can't let it recharge into the ground because of contaminants. And under state regulation, you need to collect that, put it through a separator, and then put it into the sewer system. So that's what we're doing. But except that that whole sewage and oil trap, these are oil traps you, you'll have to put there. Yes. But, but they're going to be at what elevation? They'll be down at that lower level parking garage. They'll be under the parking garage. They'll be under the parking garage, right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how functional they're going to be if they have to be at that depth. They they're have to flow through gravity. Um, and the existing sewer right now is at an elevation that, that will support that. Um, one of the main sewer trunk lines uh, in this area actually crosses underneath the Eastern County Dip, so it's quite low. Um, we've been working with the city on the Waterfront Square project to try to button up and tighten up that sewer so it's not full of uh, groundwater and, and the, the city's actually under an edict from EPA and, and DEP to continue to make efforts um, to get groundwater out of, out of that system. So it, the system functions, uh, the system's low, we're up much higher than that so our oil water separators are, will, will, will function. They won't be they won't be surcharged or inundated unless we have a, you know, a flooding event. Thank you. Anybody else on the commission? Questions, comments? Yeah, I have a Member question. Member Sabon? Yes, thank you. Um, question with regard to um, comment for recharge. Uh, the majority of the development will drain to storage volume. Uh, understood uh, grade is a problem um, and the, the comment in that final first paragraph is since not all the impervious areas will be drained to the provided recharge volume ca the capture area adjustment is applied to the required volume so can you just explain um, what you mean by the capture area certainly when DP requires that we provide a certain amount of recharge for an impervious site. It's based on the underlying soils, and what it tries to do is it mimics what the underlying soils will accept. If it's a very porous soil, sand, then that recharge rate is high. It's actually 0.6 inches of, of rainfall over your impervious surface that you need to provide some volume for. Well, practicality says if you don't send a portion of your drainage to that recharge practice, how can you take credit for it? So they have what's known as a capture adjustment. And what it says is if you have three quarters of your drainage going to that infiltration practice, but a quarter doesn't, then you need to adjust the volume that you provide by an appropriate factor up um, so that in the balance, and they're looking to balance and, and mimic the annual recharge, not just recharge on a storm event, but the annual recharge that happens today uh, into, the, um, into the ground. So that's the capture adjustment. It increases our required volume, which we have provided. It's important to note that there's not a lot of recharge happening out there today because of the paved surfaces. We're providing a recharge, the, we're providing the recharge as if the site was vacant and had no, no pavement on it today. So we're fully meeting DEP requirement as if we were to consider it vacant, uh, not paved in the existing condition. Anything further? Uh, a follow-up on um, the, the treatment. Uh, so so you're kind of, basically you're saying you're being forced to treat all the water because you don't really have any recharge or infiltration for, for to treat it otherwise, correct? The the roof doesn't have to be treated, and that's where our 
the majority of our um, the majority of our impervious is the is the building because we're covering the parking with either building or the courtyard then everything is roof and everything is considered clean and therefore we don't have to treat it the parking lot on the south um, the small parking lot on the south is is not and we do have to treat that and that's where we put the the bioretention area for that and that gets us um, 80 percent total suspended solids treatment yeah can you describe the um, construction of the bioretention AC certainly um, and how it how it achieves 84 percent what, what a bioretention area is is it's an area that that we sheet flow from the parking lot towards a, a very small depression it's only a foot and a half deep um, we vegetate that area with special plants prescribed to not only survive inundation of water but also do some um, pollutant uptake uh, do some treatment itself underlying that area is 24 inches of a special soil mix that's 30 percent compost 30 percent sand and 30 percent loam um, that's a filter medium and the water trickles through that and gets treated underlying that is a filter fabric and some stone and an under drain where we take the the treated water and we're allowed to then discharge that so it's vegetative uptake and but mostly the filtration through the soil media uh, that provides that 80 percent tss there is a stone diaphragm before that was which, which is just a stone area between the parking lot and the bioretention area to knock off any heavy sediment um, sand trash and that can be periodically cleaned out um, so it doesn't clog. theoretically yeah. yes so I I guess I have my doubts about the bioretention basin when the groundwater table is so high and the soils aren't um, suitable for infiltration to begin with. We, we considered that, and, and um, it, is, it is above the water table that the geotechnical engineer um, determined. So our soil mix, our soil media will be, um, will be dry. It won't be in the groundwater. Um, but we, we could, you could do a bioretention area, and underneath that stone where your underdrain is, you could put poly liner there and have no infiltration. Because we're meeting the infiltration with the roof drainage and the other system on, against Revere Street, we don't actually have to, to infiltrate that area, and we could just merely use that as a treatment, and uh, the volume in there will cut the, the, the peak rates a little bit. All right, so back to maintenance of the bioretention basin. Basic maintenance is to make sure the vegetation is, is good. Um, you do want to use a, uh, you do want to put a mulch down, and that mulch needs to be a uh, triple shredded hardwood so it doesn't float. Um, if you just throw wood chips or mulch down there, it'll, every time it rains, it'll float. Um, and the, the most important thing on that is that periodically, once every three years or so, you, you remove that mulch and you put new mulch down. You don't just mulch over it. So your general landscape contractor will come out and throw some more mulch down. So it, it does need particular maintenance from that standpoint. And what you don't want to happen there is, is, to, is to block the, the water's path to that soil media um, to get that filtration. What you can do when you pull the mulch up, if you are getting maybe a sediment sheen or a, um, or a, a blocking layer on top of that, you can remove that, put some fresh um, bioretention mix down, um, put your mulch back down, put your plants back down, and, and, and you should be good as gold. But it's not a large area. It's not a large parking lot. Um, it's not, I don't think it's going to have a high sediment load, um, but we do, we have provided a full operation and maintenance plan. Um, um, the, the neighborhood developers uh, will continue to manage this as they, they, they also manage the other 86 units that they have in, in Revere. Um, so I, I'd maybe be a, a little bit worried if it was a condo association and we were putting that on them, but this is, 
this is people that uh, that manage properties, and uh, with with the right O and M, they'll be able to do that. Joe, I don't see some of that stuff uh, specifically detailed in Standard Nine Operations and Maintenance Plan. On a quick read of that, I will review that, Mr. Chairman, to make sure that it's complete. Okay, yep. and submit. Mr. Okay. Chairman, another question, please. Member Lavalli. Would you have a sketch of the building? I didn't happen to see one anywhere. That is a, a very boring rendition of the building in that it shows um, a side elevation of the two parking decks and the four levels above it. Uh, up in the corner, there's an isometric that shows the blue is the is the four story, the green is the is the courtyard. So you're looking kind of from the corner of Revere and Sachem at um, at the building, and then the gray is the parking under. I do have um, an artist rendering of of the the building here, and it, it answers one of my questions. So it's a flat roof, in effect. Yes, it is. And the material on the roof is it rubber coated? Be rubber rubber coated, and then it'll be interior roof drains that'll lead into that roof drain system I described. And the, the drainage system runs around the periphery of the building somewhere and down. The, the roof drainage system is is in that fill along Revere Street. So if you picture. Right now we have a steep embankment that makes kind of a triangle. We fill that in. It gives us area that's high, well above the water table, to grab some, some good soil to, to provide some recharge. So that's where that system is. Anybody else in the commission? Okay, we'll open it up for proponents, opponents, uh, comments before we do that. I'd just like to speak uh, regarding the Chapter 131, Section 40, Protected Interest. There are nine of them. Public water supply, private water supply, groundwater supply, land containing shellfish, fisheries, storm damage prevention, prevention of pollution, protection of wildlife habitat, and flood control. These resource areas that were submitted for consideration were of land subject to coastal storm flowage, as Mr. Pandola said, Pandola said uh, there are no uh, performance requirements for that. Uh, for Coastal Bank, it's significant to flood control and to storm damage. Other resource areas that could be considered, but I don't think the first three need it, is Coastal Beach, Coastal Dunes, Barrier Beach. Salt marshes, which I spoke about, is that the work proposed project at a salt marsh or in body of water adjacent to a salt marsh shall not destroy any portion of the salt marsh and shall have not have an adverse effect on productivity of the salt marsh. Uh, riverfront area, uh, mosquito ditches associated with coastal Coastal rivers do not have a riverfront area, so that wouldn't be a resource. Uh, with that, uh, anybody who's going to speak, uh, particularly in opposition, should try and relate it. What you're saying, I'm going to ask the uh, present city councilor uh, Eric to speak first. Sure. As a courtesy. Gentlemen, members of the commission. Make sure you speak into the mic, John. At, at the outset, outset, let me say that I am 100% uh, against this project. I live approximately 100 yards from the Eastern County Ditch. I've lived in that area most of my life. I know the impact that stormwater has on the neighborhoods down there, whether it's Bay Road and the lower end of Bay Road, whether it's Sachem Street, Agawam Street, Calumet Street, Beachland Ave, Revere Street, all of those areas are affected. <clears throat> I just, and maybe I misheard the, I heard the gentleman talking about uh, draining water into the sanitary system. 
I believe that that's what we're trying to prevent right now. Yes, but per building code, plumbing code, uh, underground uh, enclosed parking structures must drain to uh, sanitary sewer. That's, that's interesting because, as you know, all, oh, of, the, I, I know it well, all of the inflow going into the sanitary system, the residents of this city are paying for at the MWRA when they get their uh, sewer, sewer bills, which are astronomical at this point. The area down there, all of the infrastructure, it's old. It probably hasn't been changed in five or six decades, if that. 51 units going in there uh, represents 51 bathrooms, showers, toilets, etc. That's probably more, more units than the Lower Bay Road area and the area up by Sachem Street combined. I don't see how the systems that we have in place can absorb that impact. It's, it's insane. Easton County Ditch. The Easton County Ditch hasn't been cleaned in years. And part of that is because, as you know, side casting is no longer permitted. So as a result, the Easton County Ditch, which runs from the Wonderland area down to Arcadia Street, goes out to the trash rack there and ultimately goes out to the tide gate, is constantly filled. As you know, uh, Commissioner, uh, we two years ago removed a lot of the Phragmites from the Oak Island section down there, down by Glendale, Gladys Street, in that area down there, to provide compensatory storage for water. To, set, to help those neighborhoods down there. This, if allowed, will set that whole area, not just Revere Street and St. Jamos and Main Bay Road, but the entire area, including parts of Oak Island, back another 50 years. So I'm here tonight in opposition to this, and I would ask that an order of conditions be denied. This is not the right thing for that area. The people down there uh, are probably so inundated, inundated now with water. Every time it rains, it rained today in front of my house at the corner of Neponset Street and Sagamore Street was flooded. That water ultimately goes into the catch basins and goes down uh, to uh, the Eastern County Ditch drains under North Shore Road, goes down right into that area there and down ultimately to Arcadia Street, the trash rack. This is wrong, 100% wrong, and, and I know the residents down there, if they were more aware of this meeting tonight, would be here. Uh, it's, it's just the wrong thing, and I ask you to deny it. Thank you very much. Could I have your street number for your address, John, on For the Ponson? 46. 46? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, Eric. Good evening. Eric Lampedecchio, 43 Tapley Avenue, Revere, Mass. I have a few questions regarding this project. The first, you okay, mentioned- Okay, go right ahead, Eric. You mentioned that there were some hydrocarbons in the soil. Was that on the existing parcel, or is that in the Eastern County Ditch itself? Anyone? You mentioned, this, you mentioned the soil was contaminated when you did a soil sampling? It was a question about whether hydric soils were present. Hydric okay. soils, are, uh, uh, irrespective of the presence of any controlled hydrocarbons, it's merely whether water is standing there. It's not a contaminant issue, is it? So just still water? Um, yeah, hydric soils, soils are one of the uh, criteria needed to identify uh, BBW. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. It's, and it's basically based on um, the amount of oxy oxygen or lack of oxygen in the water. Okay. Thank you. This property you mentioned will be elevated four to six feet high. Is that correct? 
I heard elevation four to six. It's currently at an elevation uh, of 4.5. It won't be elevated. The lower level of the parking lot will be at the existing level of the parking lot. Um, then there'll be a deck of parking above that. So building up this infrastructure, will this displace some of the water that would normally just lay at that elevation level then? No, we did the calculations and essentially the, the volume, we, we looked at the existing conditions considering when, when the cove building was there and the volume that water could occupy on that site and the water that can occupy the site, knowing, knowing that the, the garage levels could be flooded, would be flooded, um, there's, no, there's no change. There's actually a net increase in the, in the flood storage uh, on the site. Okay, thank you. Another question in regards to the flood storage, specifically the special plants you mentioned near the parking lot. Would these plants be an invasive species and what impact would they have on the existing vegetation in the Eastern County Ditch? They, they will not be invasive. The, their uh, mass DEP has a, a list of plants that are suitable for bioretention areas. They're not in, uh, invasive. Again, they have the quality that they can survive periodic inundation of water, um, but they also have some qualities in, in uh, pollutant uptake. And my last question, uh, you mentioned that there was mulch that needed to be placed on the property and replaced. Uh, what preventative measures are in place right now or will be put into place to prevent that mulch from catching fire and possibly spreading over to the vegetation at the Eastern County Ditch? Um, the mulch is, a, is only in the, the bioretention area. So there, it's a small depression that's a, about 10 feet by 20 feet. Um, it's got, again, a stone diaphragm around the edges, and the plant material is, is in there. Um, I, I don't think it poses a, a huge threat because it, it's, it's kind of isolated from the rest of the uh, landscaping and, and vegetation that, that is proposed. It's a very small component of the overall landscape plan. Thank you for your time. I ask that you, uh, uh, excuse me, I ask that you decline this project. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? Anybody, in, any proponents, any opponents, anything further from the commission? Yeah, I'd just uh, I'd like to go on the record that I, I'm going to motion. Uh, can I make a motion? Uh, I wait? think there's a gentleman that would like to speak. Come to the mic, please. State your name and address. Turn it on. There you go. Dave LaMalfa, 27 Ford Street, Revere. I lived in the Bay Road area for over... What, what's the street you're on? Ford Street. Ford Street, off of Revere Street. Off Revere Street. And give me your last name again, Dave. LaMalfa. LaMalfa. Capital L-A, capital M-A-L-F-A. -A. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I lived in this area of Ward 5 Bay Road area for over 50 years. I played in that march. I know what's in there. I used to go sledding in there. I, just, I fell in that ditch many a times. It's an economic water place. There's fish in there. I found turtles in there. And you want to build, I mean, this, this is a salt marsh. This is a, you can't build anything more on a salt marsh. I don't get it. How do you do this? How are we doing that? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. This is a bad project, I have to admit it. You're building on a salt marsh. You're killing an economic environment. This is an ocean place. Where do you think you get your high tides from? From the salt marsh. It comes from the ocean, plain and simple. This is not rocket science, people. This is a salt marsh. You're build, trying to build on a salt marsh. It has to stop. OK, thank you. Anybody else? I've written an order of conditions uh, for this project, but my preference would be to uh, continue the uh, hearing till next month.
DEP has not, uh, has it under review, has not made any comments at this time. There's some uh, things that we'd like uh, the proponent to submit before we do uh, vote on it. So what is the will of the commission on this? Uh, can I? I'm not sure what, uh, what's been prepared um, for the proponent in lieu of waiting for a response from the DEP. But I would uh, obviously motion to deny at this time until we get adequate information. I think the notice of intent is in. So you want to close the public hearing and deny the order of conditions? That's my motion on the grounds that uh, standard one has not been met, standard two has not been met in the stormwater report. Um, standard four, in my opinion, has not been met. Um, and standard nine has not been met on those grounds you don't think uh, it would be uh, better to grant a continuance and ask for them to uh, address those issues rather than just denying because if we deny i'm sure certain the proponent's going to appeal it and that puts it out of our hands to put conditions on it it'll be dep that will delay their process by four to six months. I'm in favor of that, yes. You're in favor of? I can uh, get a superseding order of conditions. And going to a superseding. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. So close the public hearing to deny. Any opposed? Voted in the affirmative. Would you turn your mic on, please, Joe? Sorry. Could you please explain what the vote was there? It was a motion to close the public hearing and to deny issuance of an order of conditions. And what was the, the, the vote as far as members That voting? was unanimous. U unanimous to deny? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll record it with DEP, Joe, as the denial. And, uh, you know, you take the action you need to take. So we still sign it, even though it's denied. Okay, moving on. So that, what that means is DEP will have an appeals hearing on it. Uh, unfortunately, that won't be at night. That will be during the day. If uh, anybody wants to shoot me an email, uh, as soon as I get the notice of the denial, just go to review website, uh, departments, board and commissions, conservation commission, and either send it to A. DeSantis at revere.org or concom at revere.org. So when I get it, then I can distribute it. So you'll have it, uh, hopefully, in a timely manner. Moving on uh, to a public hearing, uh, they asked me, because they failed to notify the abutters for the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation 459-463 of Revere Beach Boulevard, h &B Construction. Uh, so they asked me to hold it to next month. Uh, next item is a vote, DEP file number 0610686, request for a certificate of compliance, National Grid. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Ann Raponi. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by uh, Nick. Nick. All those in favor? Aye. Voted. Next item, 
is a uh, certificate of compliance for DEP file number 0610620, stable area and race course, stormwater improvement, Sterling <coughs> Suffolk uh, race course. I did get an as built plan from Tetra Tech. Is there anybody here from Tetra Tech? If you got any questions on this, uh, this gentleman could Yeah, say Matt Moyen name? with Tetra Tech. Matt, what's your last name? Moyen, M O Y E N. If uh, no questions for Mr. Moyen, uh, do I have a motion to approve, to issue? I'll make, make a, motion a motion to approve. To approve. Okay, I got Nick first, Dan. So I need a second. I'll second. James? All those in favor? Any opposed? Voted. And the last Thank item you. I had was a minor amendment to DEP file 0610697 Oak Island Road and Bridge Street Railroad Crossing Improvements. They're going to put uh, some more parking there. Would you like to speak on that, John? Couple of, several years back, uh, there was an agreement signed, uh, I believe, by the uh, Embracino administration to uh, make some improvements to the grade crossing down at Oak Island uh, on Bridge Street and Oak Island Road. And uh, part of the agreement was that uh, the uh, commuter line would stop uh, leaning on the horn when the cars went through there at night, which uh, probably happened uh, 50 or 60 times during a 24-hour period. Uh, well, uh, Mira Rigo received notice uh, a couple of months ago that uh, the horns would start blowing again if we didn't make the improvements down there. And, uh, this was nothing that uh, he had agreed to. I think it was something that was just uh, put aside. Uh, the city council appropriated $250,000 to make those improvements. The improvements are underway. Uh, it was originally planned for three parking spaces off of uh, Bridge Street and Oak Island Road for the neighbors who would, who would be displaced with regard to their parking. Uh, I, for one, felt that was not adequate. Uh, we're looking to put seven or eight spaces down there. And to do that, we have to uh, go back uh, probably, from what I'm told, an another 10 or 12 feet to, to gain that uh, space so we can uh, park the angle of cars in and give the people down there the uh, parking they uh, need. So uh, I, I'm asking you this evening to uh, support that. And uh, uh, there's a lot of people down in Oak Island who are uh, you know, have lived there all their lives, and uh, I just don't want to see uh, uh, their lives disrupted down there because uh, of the parking situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Anybody else would like to speak on that? Do I have a motion to approve? Ooh. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is adjourned. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Nick Malason to adjourn. Do I have a second? By Joe? Oh, oh Bob. Okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? Adjourned at 754.